All right, we're going to be in the book of James again today. Again, it's not a series. I don't know why it's not, but I just, again, I was reading it uh, last month, and I just love it. I shared it the last couple of weeks. I'll share it again. Because he's writing to church leaders, which, which really some of Paul's epistles are also, they're all written to churches, but this is specifically to all the churches of Jerusalem, and he's encouraging them, and he's encouraging us uh, uh, with principles to apply, again, not just as pastors or, or deacons and leaders, but as congregants, as Christians. Um, and we're going to just jump right into it. I title today's message, Mighty Tongue, Mighty Words. You know, the tongue has more power than we think. And if you think somebody who may be deaf and they can't speak, believe me, I have a sister, an older sister who's deaf and speaks sign language. I have a brother uh, who's uh, two years older than me who's hard of hearing, and he speaks sign language. But even in sign language, okay, it, it, you'll still know there's some bad words coming. Because whether it's verbally or with sign language or, or just some hand motions, you know, like driving down the parkway. <laughs> some hand motions, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Who's driving when they're doing all that? <laughs> the tongue is mighty. It's a mighty little thing. And, and it can speak a blessing and a curse. So let's stand and pray for the word, and we're going to get into it today. We'll be reading James 3, 1 through 10, but let's pray first. Lord, thank you for the message today. Let your scriptures guide our hearts, open up our hearts, and open up our minds, and help it transform us. Your word declares in Hebrews that it cuts through bone, it cuts through marrow, it cuts through spirit. Basically showing us it can cut through anything to change us. And we want that, Lord. Change our minds, change our hearts. We want truth. And nothing else, Lord. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. May we see you, please. Again, mighty tongue, mighty words. This is James 3, 1 through 10. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Remember, he's talking to church leaders. And he, he starts off this chapter by going... Hey, by the way, if you think you should be a teacher, I'm letting you know maybe some of you shouldn't. And here's the reason why. Look at verse 2. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we can control our tongues, we would be perfect and can also control ourselves in every other, in every other way. We can make a large horse. I'm sorry. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. A small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. Listen, listen. It's a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of wild animals, birds, reptiles, fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. How about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some of you spouses are like, honey, God bless you. Honey, I don't want I'm going to laugh a little too hard. <laughs> Pastor Lane would be too. She was here. She was teaching today. And so blessings and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, look at these last four words. This is not right. James clearly points out if we can be in control of our tongues, he literally writes, we would be perfect. Okay, not perfect literally, but we'd be working towards growth and perfection. A little tongue, the average tongue weighs about three ounces. It is a joke in my family. Mine weighs five. <laughs> James shared that the tongue can be a world of evil. And he wrote, listen, like evil, hell itself. Referring to the sinful nature 
of this world and what goes on around us. And he says we can tame everything, uh, uh, everything but the tongue. And he's right, we can't tame the tongue. But you know who can? The Holy Spirit. See, there's hope. There's hope for those tongues and those brains. And James goes on to share some examples, right? A little bit of a horse's mouth. Now, some horses can weigh 2,000 pounds. And this little bit of rain can direct it. It can share, it can steer a ship wherever it wants to go, right? A little rudder can, can, can steer a ship. And one little spark, you know, those Canadian wildfires that are still burning now. Those fires, remember the summer we had, I thought it was like, I thought, I thought Jesus is coming back. I woke up, I was like, he's coming back there. He wasn't. Still here. We're going one day. But someone started that fire. They were doing a campfire. That's how those fires started. They've been burning for months. One little spark. One little word. Hey, hey, anybody ever say a word to you start a forest fire? Yeah. Yeah. The brains go. <laughs> Pastor Lane always says something. She always goes, We can forgive others for what they say to us. Others can forgive us for what we say to them, but we can't take back those words. Once they're out of the mouth, once they're spoken, they're spoken. And one wrong word, listen, can change the situation and, and make it ugly real quick. Or one good word can change the situation and make it good real quick. I want to read our opening verses again in the Message Bible version. And just again, you know, you guys know I love some of the wording. This message Bible. So this is again James 3, 1 through 10. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is a highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standard, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If we could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder and a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of the mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set up a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. But our speech I'm sorry, by our speech, we can rule the world, turn harmony, chaos, throw mud in a repu uh, reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame the tongue. It's, ne it's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father. With the same tongue, we curse every man and woman he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. Mm. Our, know what our challenge is? I'm, I'm going to change that. You know what my challenge is? Not none of you. Know what my challenge is? I just, I, my brain can think quick in like situations like that. No, there's a car accident. Like, I'll be the guy taking my shirt off, wrapping around somebody quickly. Like, that's just my brain. But yet, when it comes to something I shouldn't say, the same process ain't there. Am I alone? No, no. No? All right. I feel good now. <laughs> it's past appreciation day. <laughs> right? Why is it? Why is it I can think quick and react to something that's, that's you know, obviously could be important, right? But when it comes to some conversation or some situation, I just open that I did it yesterday, Pastor Lyon. We're having a great day. She said something, I was like, ah, she's like, what? <laughs> ah, preach on this tomorrow, man. Now I gotta give, I gotta give myself up. <laughs> and James is saying, listen, you can be a teacher, but be careful. Because what you do outside of those times you're teaching is still seen. Mm -hmm. I know some of the smartest educated men, they say some of the dumbest things. We, 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 we have an advocate, the Holy Spirit. We've got some directions, the Word of God. Listen, listen, and it's by choice. That's the challenge. We have to choose it. We have to choose the Holy Spirit and say, guide me. Help me not say this. We have to allow the Word of God to come in saying, a kind 
before it turns into wrath. We can be joy. Turn the other cheek. We can just let the word of God come in and allow these things to work in our lives. The challenge we have is what we're connected to also. I know kids growing up, not brother Jerome, he's one of the good guys, but I know guys growing up that I've known for 40 years, they're exactly the same they were 40 years ago. They speak the same, they curse, they got anything. Everything's the same. Because they didn't progress. We need to mature to progress in life. And we have this advantage because we're still connected to this world. You guys all know I have another job now. I work at construction. I'm a, I'm a project manager. Okay, I work with you and you guys. You think these guys are a bunch of fluffy dubby dubby? No. <laughs> they got that F bomb like it's like, holy mackerel. But, but listen, that's where I was. Every other word. But so, so I'm allowing myself to not let that influence me. And it's funny because if I meet someone new, I let them know I'm a pastor, and you know what happens then? They'll curse, oh, I'm sorry. And I go, are you really? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, but, but the things influence us. But, but listen, what comes out of us first comes in us. TV, social media, movies, music, whatever it is, social media, okay? Whatever influences us normally makes us who we are. I told a story to someone not long ago, and I've probably mentioned it before here. My son was probably a junior or sophomore in high school, and we were eating dinner, and dinner was going on, and he said something, he started, he said something really nasty to Pastor Elaine. And I was like, yo, yo, Brian, I stood up at the table, yo, bro, what are you talking to? No, stop. I go, what you want to talk like that in school? He goes, no, from you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah. I was like, what? But he was right. I had a conversation, I repented, I asked him for forgiveness. He was right. He heard his father. I influenced him to speak like that. There's influences in our lives. And you know what we need? We need an interjection. We need something to come along to give us an interjection connection. We need the Spirit of God and the Word of God that can help us not say things, not do things. Come on, every time you said something, you go, man, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> or how about we text something? That's even worse. Like, set up. And, and, and on the iPhone, you can like, read it real quick. Yeah, okay, I'll read it first. All of a sudden, red. Oh! <laughs> See, our thoughts. Our thoughts come from what we're connected to. And sometimes we need that interjection. Something to come in to help. This is what the definition of interjection means. It means to throw in between or among other things. See, we need an interjection connection to these tongues. It, it goes to the brain first because the tongue can't speak until the brain says so. Okay, so there's something going on up here. And we need the Word of God and the Spirit of God to interject, to help us, to step in. Listen, Jesus interjected on the cross, right, for our salvation, for us to have a place in heaven. But, but we also will interject in other areas to help us. Anyone need the help of God and Holy Spirit when you talk there and think and saying something? Huh? Huh? Words are powerful. They come from thoughts. Then they become the action that comes out. The word of God brings us truth. And we have to believe in that and lean on that and trust in that. And we have to be able to keep changing and growing and maturing. It's so important. Listen, everything, you, you say something to your kids, everything your kids are. People are blame society, social, no, no, no. Go look in, the, find the quickest mirror. Mm -hmm. Just look in it. Yeah. That's because of me. Mm -hmm. That's because of me. Relationships, people, people you hang out with. Listen, sometimes you've got to stop hanging out with certain people. They, they can be a bummer. I mean, I can't. I mean, negative people, they can, first of all, they don't even come by me. Just, again, you guys don't know, I'm like super optimistic on the, the overload. One drop of water, can't fall the glass. I don't care. But like, sometimes people are negative and that. I, I, don't, I, I, I can't be connected to that stuff. I need to be optimistic. There's too much negativity out there already. And that stuff infiltrates our minds. And it infiltrates our words. And is it the most idiotic thing that we say the worst things to the closest people to us? 
It's not funny. <clears throat> right? You could be at work and <clears throat> get on the phone on the way home. <clears throat> you get some of your laughs, I guess. I guess I'm not alone. Here's three focuses real quick, listen, that can help the mighty tongue. Stop saying mighty hurtful words. And some mighty caring words. And here's the first focus. Listen, controlling our tongue. Controlling. We can control our tongue. No, I'll take it back. God can help us. The Holy Spirit can prompt us with convictions, proactively or maybe even reactively, if we have to apologize for something. But the power is there to help us change in controlling it. Listen, James. Three, one through four. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. But we can control our tongues. We would be perfect and control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want, a a small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong, controlling control over our tongues First means control over our minds. Change what we think. And listen, find out why you think that way. Right? Why do we think a certain way? I used to always think towards a, 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 like a corrupt thought and evil thoughts. You know? A, a, a way to scam something. Because that's what I was brought up in. I don't want to think that way. I think a, a pure thought now, a, a good thought. And, and listen, sometimes my brain's going, I, I even go, wow, where'd that come from? You know where it comes from? The Holy Spirit. Jesus said he'll come and remind us of all things. He reminds us of the word of God. So he will, if we choose, he'll allow us. He'll empower us to change thoughts, to change words. Listen, even words, Pastor Elaine said something. I, I had a plan to share. She said something when she opened up about uh, speaking things over us, the names that we called ourselves. Well, forget your brain's control. You, you're saying things to yourself. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not that. And it might have been said by somebody else, but we add to it by receiving what they said. No, no, no. Truth. I am good. I'm more than. I'm a conqueror in Christ. I'm the apple of his eye. It's important. Even speaking things over ourselves. John Calvin, who's the like a Protestant leader of the Reformation, you know, uh, back in 18, the 1800s, he wrote this, listen, listen. It says, he warns us to beware of those who try to act spiritually mature and yet are constantly running others down with their tongue. Words are powerful. Words can hurt. They either bless or they curse. First Peter 3.10, for the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and see happy days, Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Two examples that we read there, right? The horse, I'm sorry, the, the ship, he controls it, right? The captain of the ship controls whatever horse he's going to be on and the, and the horse to rider also. We control it. They choose which way the ship will go. They choose which way the horse is going to go. The ship don't go on its own. The horse don't go. So we choose which way our words are going to go. It's up to us. We're the captains. Sometimes we can put a bit in our mouth, right? <laughs> Shut it up. Psalms 141, 3. Listen. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. I love that. And he does. He gives us the Holy Spirit. You know what happens though? Our problem? No, I'm sorry. My problem? I don't want to include you guys. My problem is I got no lock on that door. Sometimes. Sometimes I pull that thing off the hinges and it's just like Bleh! But if we allow God, we allow the Lord, we allow the Holy Spirit, He'll see, He'll set guard over it. The Holy Spirit will sit right there and go, John, if you just call on me first, I'll help you with your thoughts. And guess what, John? There'll be a, a door over your lips, and I'll have to keep it closed. But see, we push the Holy Spirit aside sometimes. You know why? We want our way. Well, that's it. I'm gonna, I, I gotta get it off my chest. I gotta get it off my mind. That, that's a lie. That's a lie. It's a lie. 
It's a good thing God don't look at us like that, going, I got to deal with you. I got to get this off my chest. No, he goes, grace, mercy, love. So God treats us that way. We have to treat each other that way. Here's the second thing. Focus on the small things. James 3, 5, and 6. In the same way, the tongue is small. A small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set a whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Basically, now James is showing us that when we're speaking evil, we're speaking hell. Did you ever think about that? When we're speaking something out of God, we're speaking hell to somebody else. And he's saying it grand, it, it, it boasts grand things. He doesn't say good things. So we can spoke, we can speak grand things in a good way or grand things in a bad way. He's saying that 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 that, that tongue needs to be tamed. That that tongue can speak encouragement or discouragement. The more we change this, the more we change this. Mm. Proverbs 5, 1 through 2, 15, 1 through 2, listen. A gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a tempered fire. Knowledge flows like spring from, I'm sorry, knowledge flows like spring water from the wise. Fools are leaky faucets, dripping nonsense. So are we going to be wise or are we going to be fools? I always think about the saying, right? When we were little kids, we, you know, we said this, you know. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. How much of a lie is that? <laughs> right? Right? We got we have good things said to us in our life, but you know we always remember the bad thing. We, we, all, all we, all, I got many good things said to me. There are some things set in my brain, I can't even get them out. And there's some negative things that someone spoke over me. I'll take a broken bone, okay, and some sticks and stones, okay, <laughs> over some names all day, twice on Sunday. Boy, were they wrong. And again, Pastor Elaine, right, you can forgive me for what I said. I can forgive you what you said, but you can't take back what you said. It's already spoken. And when it's not of God, it's of evil. And it rains there. Ephesians 4.21, listen, do not use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. See, everyone was dealing with this thousands of years ago also. But, but the word of God is written to help us, to empower us, to strengthen us, to not speak these things. First of all, not think these things. What's the old saying? If you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Why doesn't that come from you before I say it? <laughs> you know why? There's no power in it. The verses, the scriptures, the spirit, help me, Lord. Help me to just be quiet and speak loud. Wait, how about this one, ready? Ready? Maybe a lot of couples know this, but this, this can be family relationships too, right? How about you say something that you mean well, but you said something that it was stupid. <laughs> I guess everyone's in on that one. You, you, you mean, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say this, and I'm going to try, and I mean well, and no, 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 why? Good intentions have no power either. The Spirit of God, the Word of God, those are the things. Here's the last thing. Focus on speaking life. Focus on. Let that be our thought process. James 3, 7 and 10. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Listen to the words he's writing. Sometimes he praises our Lord the Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. And James is like, just, just like, like, like correcting us in this area, going, man, you can tame a wild animal, but you can't tame yourself. That's what he's sure is showing us here. 
But he's saying the Holy Spirit of God can, the Word of God can. Right? They would, I don't even know if they do that anymore. No, like the, what is it? Um, oh my gosh, down in Orlando, the Orca whale, they came, they, they trade things, and seals, and sea worms. You couldn't think of it. Right? And lions, and circus, and bears, and meanwhile, I can't tame this little one. In my, in my case, five pound tongue. Five ounce tongue. Maybe this five pounds sometimes. Thoughts get the best of us. We got a lot of spirit of God to get the best of us. Luke 6, 4, and 5. Listen, a good person produces good things from the treasures of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasures of an evil heart. What you say flow from what is in your heart. And when you get hurt, you hurt people. The old saying is true, hurting people hurt people. So if we're hurting people, we need to check out what we're hurt. Maybe we need a healing. Maybe we need some God to intervene, to interject in our lives. And we need that spirit of God, and that word of God, that interjection connection to come in to help change us and examine what's going on in our hearts and our minds. Listen, I remember doing some training things, some like therapy type things, and I found out stuff that I was holding on to from a little kid. What's real stuff? I was like wounded in some areas. I wounded people in some areas. I had to ask for forgiveness and get a healing. They could be transformed from the filthiness of this world. It's ugly. It's dirty. It, 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 it infects us sometimes. Ephesians 4, 22 and 24. Listen. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupt by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like who? God. Truly righteous and holy. We must allow that to happen. And the more we can do that, the more we'll be transformed. The more our hearts will be healed and strengthened. The more our words will be blessings and not curses. Let's watch this video. say something, and you don't mean to say it, which I believe is probably most of the cases. Sometimes people are evil and mean and nasty, and they mean to say what they say. But I would say for the most part, maybe, you know, we, we shouldn't and we probably don't. 
And then we, and I said to something we used to go when I was preaching, we go, God, you know my heart. And, and yeah, he does. Because if that's what came out, that's what's inside. That's what's inside. That's what's inside. That's why we have to change the inside. Change our thought process. From ungodly things to godly things. From ungodly thoughts to godly thoughts. Ungodly actions to godly actions. And when we make a conscious choice, just like the captain does when he's steering the ship and the horse rider does when he's steering the horse and the person who should put the <laughs> fire out properly and not start a fire, we, we, we'll speak these good things, those lovely, godly things. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today, your spirit. Guide us, Holy Spirit. I pray anyone listening who's hear this now or listening now or online or here or in the future, somebody watching this, Lord, and they've never truly said these words. Jesus, I accept you into my life. Come into my life. Save my soul. Prepare a place for me in heaven. I am a sinner. I know you died on that cross to save my soul. I accept you now. Anyone who's prayed that and thought that, I pray that they would connect with somebody, or a, a, a Christian that they might know, or, or connect with a good God-loving Bible-teaching church. Someone's been off track. Maybe their hearts and their words have just been all over the place, but they would get back on it with me today. And Lord, help us all, Lord, to allow your spirit and your word to make that interjection connection to help change our thoughts and heal our hearts and change them so that we can speak life and not death. So you can be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless the Lord. God bless you, everybody. Please stay and have some cake and some coffee and some fellowship. And we're so glad you're all here today. <clears throat>